is crazy. It, it's landed. Look at that. And the wow. same spot that it launched from. That's Whoa. mental. I don't think. All right. Hey guys. So this is episode two with Christian, the flip side. Um, that's the name we came up with. We actually came up with that after episode one. Um, the idea is, you know, right now I'm doing the entrepreneur route. Christian's doing the nine to five side route. So it's, you know, the flip side, you guys get to see what the other perspective is. So that's sort of the theory behind the name. Christian sort of came up with that, so I could tell you more about that. But yeah, this is episode two. Uh, Christian, how's your how's your week been? Good, man, good. Happy to be back, episode two already. Only 48 episodes to go until half a century. We got this. Easy. I'm keen, I'm keen. Um, every, that's like 50 episodes a year, 52. Maybe we'll bump it up to two a week in the future. <laughs> I think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. We'll, we'll take it week by week, but you know, the flip side, the flip side, get ready yeah. for it. What's your thoughts on your name, of the name Christian? The flip side. Uh, I think the way you thought about it was a good idea. Like, you know, having the contrast between the two and trying to find like a good metaphor for it. It was so hard the way, like trying to find a good metaphor. We racked our brains until like, we're going back and forth, back and forth until like the flip, like the flip side just works, eh? Because it's literally the flip side, like of what we, each other do I, I like it I like it. i think i think it's a good podcast name as well like you said it rolls off the tongue no everything's going our way too good too good yeah, i reckon it sounds good welcome to the flip side it sounds it just rolls off the tongue but yeah dude jeff bezos hit 200 freaking billion this year i mean no now that's crazy i saw that i saw that my god like what the guy's actually crazy the first person in the world to be valued 200 billion dollars that is ridiculous. That is, he's only going to go up as well. Like, uh, there was a projection of his to reach, like, become the world's trillion. first trillionaire yeah. by what, 2023, I think? Damn, that's insane. And, like, it's crazy. Like, I, I felt like yesterday that he hit 100 billion. Because uh, Amazon's only going to keep growing as well. It's like a literally a meteoric rise. Like, there's no way that it can't keep growing. And, uh, He's just, he's just crazy. Like, I just can't believe it. Especially because Amazon are starting to delve into different things now with Amazon Prime Video, like yeah. increasing its popularity. Like you got their originals competing against Netflix originals and like their originals are doing well. Like some of their originals are like on par, if not better quality than Netflix's originals. And it's like the documentaries that have coming out. It's really interesting to have one coming out for a football club, Tottenham Hotspur, it's like an inside as to what they do. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, He's only going to keep going up. He's only going to keep going up. Because like, dude, I was doing research about what they're doing and like Jeff Bezos, he has like Amazon Pay. He has like things that lends out money. He has like Amazon Cash Go. He's like literally building up. He has Amazon Insurance. Like he's literally building a fucking bank. Like he's doing everything, fucking vertical integration, taking every single piece of the pie. But um, on that, like on the, on the topic of vertical integration, as well as that, have you seen Amazon rolling out stores um in where i think it's in england there's a few in england maybe a couple in america where you don't it's essentially completely contactless you go in oh, and yeah i've seen the same okay. but on the topic of that like it's it's one of those things where it's like literally a grocery store you go in and you have yeah see amazon go store you go in and you just pick items off the shelf that's ridiculous that is yeah. actually ridiculous Dude, and the same thing is like you pick things up and sometimes the camera catches you and you just walk yeah. out with it. Like, what if you accidentally pick up two, three things? It somehow just counts everything. It's insane. That's the thing. So when you have, you know, these sort of stores integrating like extremely high levels of technology in it, there's always going to be those complications with the less technology savvy consumers who would just essentially, they're used to, you know, going into the local Woolies or whatever the local supermarket is there, you know, grabbing it, taking it to the counter, purchasing it. Here, obviously, like you said, if you don't, if you accidentally take a few more items than you need, or if you accidentally do this, like it's going to overcharge you. I feel like there's going to be a lot more, say, complaints or issues with that as well. but. I mean, that's the thing with new technology, with each new invention or each new prospect comes a lot more. Loopholes, oh, yeah. Loopholes, etc. The, the, the saved money from not having all these checkout people far outweigh the like small percent of people being able to somehow like hack the system and like all those little hacks, technology is going to, AI is going to get so smart to like just catch them. But dude, freaking 27 stores already. That's insane. Like they're taking over retail. 
So they got stores. Okay, so just primarily in America at the moment, California, exactly. New York. Okay, so like the big cities in in America, yeah. Do but that, yeah, like you're right. Like for some people, like essentially the cash out, the cash, the cash out check, the cash. What do they call it? Checkout check. Yeah, the checkout check. If this continues, if Amazon succeed with this, like they're they're just taking over. Like I know, dude. And on that on that topic. Um, I was talking about with my friends about you know human evolution or natural selection. You know how like mm. the strong stay and the weak die. Literally, they, with, when a like when AI comes in and when there's like you know truck drivers become obsolete, checkout become obsolete, delivery people become obsolete, with drones delivering things. It's gonna be like Darwinism. Like the weak would die, and only the smart people can like survive in the new world. Um, it sucks, but like that's what's gonna happen. Um, that's natural yeah, selection. Natural selection is gonna happen, but at the same time, like I think we took we dis we kind of discussed it a little bit last week, right? It's like things are always changing. Human evolution is gonna continue changing. AI, the implementation of AI on our daily lives, it's coming. Like look at Amazon Go, it's it's here. Essentially, it's here, right? And if you are just going to like sit back and be like oh you know it's taking over and not do anything about it not go about your own way to try and upskill yourself in the sense that okay what can i do about it how can i take advantage of it or try and get ahead and i'm not saying obviously go to uni or like you know study educate study somewhere study at a tertiary institution etc but maybe just like you know just have a look around see what the opportunities are around you in terms of trying to be able to get on top of it because everything it's just going to keep changing it's, oh, it's just going to keep changing oh Dude, what I was talking about was like, um, it's insane that we learned and mastered calculus when we were 16. At 16 years old, we mastered calculus. Like that took some like, the guy who invented it, I don't know what his name is, like freaking his whole life to like come up with calculus. And we we crammed it in our brains. We were force fed it by like the you know, schools to learn it by the age of 16, that's insane. And like literally, we've been, we've grown faster than the rate of like, evolution as well like people like no wonder everyone's like having mental issues because our generation is just growing way too fast that's the thing and dude you know it's so funny that you mentioned that like we're growing we're continuously growing right we essentially compound the knowledge that we have that we've built and the foundations that we have sorry we compound on that knowledge and we continue to like create new ideas and new ways of thinking philosophy etc right and like you said with the calculus thing it kind of reminds me i don't know if you've seen i just started a new anime recently dr stone have you heard of dr stone i've heard it is there like one or two people alive and everyone's stones or something Dude, so yeah, so essentially the premise of the show is a little bit obviously crazy, but the essence of it is he's essentially, everyone just gets turned to stone, right? Humanity gets turned to stone, existence gets turned to stone. Now, two people in, are, like, are remaining in the world in the sense that two people wake up first out of the entire human civilization, one of which is a scientist, right? So one of them is a scientist. So he's obviously, so it was a modern age, right? So smartphones, etc. And he wakes up in like literally prehistoric times, like essentially you know wildlife everywhere it's overgrown trees etc right like it's, it's back to square one and he takes the knowledge that he has and essentially needs to build up build it from the ground up and like think about it like that way like right so he has all that knowledge and he's and he's got all that compounded knowledge and he started from the ground up like in that sense it's like a head start right so like going back onto what you were saying how we're constantly you know evolving and compounding the knowledge like imagine that we didn't have anything like we'd we have all the fundamentals to begin with to continue creating and it's crazy to think that without those fundamentals it's like who knows like like you said with the calculus as well it's ridiculous man dude you know what i'm thinking about like like drop kicks our age we know how to use tech we know how to consume content uh we just know so much we have so many facts on our hands like like literally we're aliens to people 100 years ago that's the thing so Oh my god, that's crazy! Because it's always a topic as well of, well, what do aliens look like, or you know, what do they sound like, or talk like? We are literally aliens from yeah. like the future to the past. Like in that perspective, the knowledge that we hold is it's it's ridiculous compared to the past. Like yeah, hundred percent would go back and like like this. Like then if we started off in a prehistoric age, like I'd be I'd be completely screwed. I wouldn't know what the hell to do, right? But if you take like the basic scientific stuff that we obviously learned way back when in year eight, nine, ten, etc., and like essentially build it from the ground up, you know, we'll, it'll be it'll be fine. But 
wow, that's a, yeah, that's a different way of thinking about it than Alien. I didn't, I didn't think about it like that. Dude, yeah. Like, I think, what's your thoughts on what aliens look like, Christian? It's weird, hey, because I, I was listening to another podcast. I forget which, but everyone's everyone's theory or everyone's mm-hmm. perception on aliens is literally what mainstream media or what Hollywood or essentially the movie, the film industry has told us is not told us, but the way they've portrayed it, right? So yeah, like you showed there, like E.T., E.T. prime example. Absolutely, like everyone would probably think that the aliens look like that, right? But like 100%, I think they're more advanced. Like there's 100% life out there. They're 100% more advanced than us. Oh, well, it's, it's easy to assume that, but obviously we don't know. But I think that like, who knows what they look like? You know what I mean? Like they could just be, uh, humans as well like there was a program on tv when we were way younger called silver sun uh, did you ever get around to watching silver sun did you hear about it it was, on oh. it was old as hell right and it's essentially just people going oh like, yes i did watch yeah. this yeah that was dark. it was the so- silver sun went off dude and it's such you like yeah. they had people in other galaxies, etc., and they were like normal people. And so I was like thinking about it that way, like uh, it's probably normal civilization, yeah. I reckon like they're probably just like us, but like maybe they have like mutations, they have like different skin color, they maybe are like maybe different physique. Oh, but maybe like you know, just like how we have animals that are completely different to um, Homo, sapi- Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens, yeah. That it makes sense where how like other species could be like different animals like they're, they're completely different they're different yeah. color than first and they have different genitals they have different everything that that's possible as well i think that's a lot higher likely i think them being like a monkey the odds of that is i reckon maybe a low but if they're like intelligent i don't know maybe you could have like some freaking have you seen those like um, movies or cartoons where you have like this super smart like animal it has glasses and shit and it's like holding like yeah, yeah. maybe it's that that's the thing like for all we know aliens like okay so extra ter- extraterrestrial life could just be like a massive elephant who can talk and like who can walk on this or two feet you know what i mean like it could be anything yeah. it? it's ridiculous dude like uh but like i think it would a lot of people here like in, in obviously earth would struggle to grasp it and they'd struggle to grasp it as reality because this is all we've known for so long i think it'd kick up a lot of a lot of fuss in the world especially in the world that we live in right now with everything you know, terrible going on in the world in america etc etc the protests just imagine if alien life was like introduced here and like we'd obviously reject it immediately because it's something that we're not used to something that we're not familiar with and it's I don't know, man. It's 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 one of those things. Probably why the Pentagon's so quiet. Probably why the Pentagon's not wanting to show us, tell us anything, dude. They do. Yeah, dude. I swear, like, they probably have like a lot of info. Like, I could tell. Like, dude, the only reason I've become president of like America is just to learn the secrets. Like, I just want the secrets. I just want the secrets. Tell me what it is, and then I'm out. I know, yeah. dude, Michelle Obama, she recently started a podcast as well. And on one of her podcasts, um, she said, like, she was talking about how a lot of people were asking, oh, what are you going to do as the first lady? Or, you know, what is Barack going to do as president? What's the first thing you're going to do? And, like, a lot of people were saying, oh, are you going to find out the secrets of the Secret Service? Are you going to, you know, find out what the Pentagon does? And that's literally what I would want to know as well. I want to go in and I want to know what is going on. Like, who is wh- who is placed where? What do they have? What do you know? Tell me everything you know. Like, Trump knows stuff, man. Like, President knows stuff. That's the thing, because they're the superpower, right? They, ugh, it's ridiculous. Dude, I recently I watched this documentary called The Great Hack. It's crazy. I haven't even finished it, but it just talks about how much data Facebook has and how, like, they literally portfolioed every single type of person and ran specific ads to those type of person for them to go ahead and change their ideas and basically use propaganda targeted propaganda it's so scary where like back in the old days propaganda was just repeating the same thing to everyone but what if you had targeted propaganda where with all the smart people you'd have different video ads to all the sort of farmers you would have more farmer specific ads and just targeted everyone and that's what you could do with facebook now it's so scary and like that's how that Trump won do you reckon as in he won because he I, was think so. I think 
this, they made it like that the Facebook, like the Facebook advertising and Facebook hacks and all that stuff really made him win. But I think that probably played a small percentage. Like I think they made it feel like that was the sole reason he won. But I think- and um, I think that's what's going on in America at the moment with the inquisition um, of Google, Facebook, um, Amazon, etc., Alphabet. Sorry, I don't know if it was up, but a Google, but essentially like, you know how the American, I don't know, how, I don't know how American politics work, right? So, cause it's completely different to here, but essentially they essentially, you know, ask them, you know, what do they do with the data? You know, how are you using it? How do we know that you're not using it for malicious content, et cetera, and then sharing the misinformation and then the, um, how Facebook was suppressing political votes or they were pushing a political agenda on Facebook. It was one of those things, but yeah, like you said, that essentially the, the topic of how Trump won, et cetera, but yeah, I don't know how it works exactly, but it's it's really interesting. Dude, it's insane. Like, um, they just have so much data. I heard in the documentary that data have, has become more valuable than oil. Insane. Like, data is, like, very underpriced right now, and all these companies are just, like, they just have so much data. And, like, eventually, like, if, like, AI gets to a point where you could just, like, copy yourself into, like, a computer, Mm. Like, you could just like have all this data and just like copy like a lot of shit. Like you could literally recreate you, Christian. Create like a virtual Christian with all yeah. his data and his search history and all his like everything, his messages. And they're like, okay, this person is Christian. It'll be pretty close mirror to you. So then should that happen? So essentially you're talking about like essentially uploading your consciousness, your subconsciousness onto a database, onto say a computer system whereby it can it can we can we'll just assume that it can sort their information it can do a lot of tasks for you subconsciously whereas you don't have to pick up a phone and make a call or do this or that if your subconsciousness uploaded to a database or to a network can essentially read your emails or do everything for you do the processing for you. that's ridiculous i think that is scary that is so scary that's gonna bring about more questions and even more like like really ethical questions in terms of if you're uploading your psyche, your consciousness, like there's a lot of implications regarding that. That's for, like, imagine, because if you do that, say one of these big companies are going to be the first ones, right? Amazon, Google, Facebook. I reckon they would be one of the first ones to try and introduce something like that. And then there's going to be more questions about that because that's ridiculous. So like, would you want, like say Google, Facebook having control over essentially you it's you they have you they possess you yeah and that's sort of what it's like now because like they have all your like if someone has all your search history likes friends messages um all your like reactions on different posts they They basically already have a replication of you already oh my god Stop it, bro. I'm gonna delete all my social media now. <laughs> I'm actually gonna live under a rock. Dude, one of my interns, he stopped using Google. He uses DuckDuckGo search. No way. But he's like, yeah, I don't want Google to get my data. So he uses DuckDuckGo search. Is um, that way? I'm using Google to search up another search engine. <laughs> yeah, Go. it's this one. DuckDuckGo. Wow. <laughs> See, that's another thing. Because of how Google has essentially monopolized the search market in the world, I, I forget that there's other search engines that you can use. Like Bing, Microsoft is clinging on to Bing so hard. Like they just, just they need to let it go. Like I don't know who uses <laughs> Bing. Maybe some yeah. people that use Bing, but dude, that's actually ridiculous. Duck, duck, go. Because it's one of those things. Like it's right. You're right. Google have everything. I use Google Pay. They have my credit card oh, details, yes. email. Yeah. I have to have Gmail, they have all my personal, like essentially my work contract would be on Gmail. They yeah. like, you use it for, what else do you use it for? You use Google for literally everything. YouTube, you watch content. Mm. Um, yeah, it's insane. And then if you have your passwords stored on Google, you can easily access it. And everything. Through. Oh my god, this is a massive realization for me. It's just a no. Dude, what the hell? They own like Nest, so they have all your security cameras. They got Android. Everyone uses Android. Like, Android, yeah. Man, this is crazy. Maps, Google, Google Maps. Maps. Everyone uses Maps. Insane. You, you Dude, can set your home location on Google Maps. They know where you live. Yeah, they know where you travel to. 
But dude, talk about like duplicating yourself and everything. Like when I was young, I always craved to freaking do the Naruto Shadow Clone Jutsu and just like uh. cancel me. <laughs> And like yeah. get a bunch of work done, have a version of me playing games, have a version of me doing homework, have a version oh, of me yeah. doing like different subjects, one writing test papers. And like when I would play League of Legends, I would, I would always like, I think I did pretty well, but I was thought like my team members. Were... So like if I had five versions of me, I'd be like a yeah. diamond player right now. That was always one of my like childhood dreams to like duplicate myself, Shadow Clone Jutsu. <laughs> And when each one of them would pop, all the like knowledge would combine into one. Dude, that's like okay. On top of what you just said, right? So I was just about to add, like the Shadow Clone Jutsu is act okay. For anyone who doesn't watch Naruto, essentially what it is is each each individual ninja has their own, you know, sort of they call it chakra, so they got their own unique power, right? So Naruto is essentially got a shadow clone, so creating a clone of himself from shadows, right? And that's his signature move. Now the unique properties of the shadow clone is essentially you. Can, I saw one image here that was downright outrageous. <laughs> yeah, just go past that. Anyway, um, the unique <laughs> property. <laughs> it was this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one of the big properties of the Shadow Clone Jutsu is essentially automation, efficiency, and in, in battle it's essentially a strategic advantage. Who wouldn't want another person there, right? But also, when you use the Shadow Clone Jutsu, any knowledge that it gains or any anything that it can do and it gains knowledge from that, once it evaporates and comes back into you essentially, you gain that knowledge as well, right? So that's a good way of thinking about, you know, uploading your psyche or uploading your subconsciousness into another way. It's essentially a shadow clone. You essentially have so many of yourself and then it, can, it does things for you. And then it essentially, when you log back into the system or when, you know, when you open your phone for the day, you, I don't know, I don't know how it would have, but essentially, all that con all that knowledge would streamline to yourself and you without you even needing to lift a muscle so essentially people can the whole world can be automated everything you can just be asleep and it, everything would happen and it goes back that's to what true. you said last week well. with, with, you get more and more spare time and then yeah. there's more time to be able to create new things and with more people around you as well then ah oh, dude this is you know what's crazy? Like I've experienced that right now. So as I'm building teams and hiring, like literally, for example, one of my jobs for one of my students was to figure out Wix.com. I was like, yo, uh, one of my interns helped me build out a website. And he probably used 100% of his brain power to figure it out. And then he spent say 100 hours to figure it out. And within probably say five hours, he was able to transfer all his knowledge and learnings into me, import it into my brain within five hours. Yes, I probably don't have the same extent of his knowledge, but I was able to gain 20%, 80% with 20% of his time. So literally I like, it was so efficient. And then now I'm getting like interns to train other interns. Like, you know, if I need a task done, you teach that person how to do it. And then you figure it out and you teach other people, they could teach me. So I'm able to sort of like learn and like, they're all working and I'm all learning from them. It's just crazy, like just a bunch of like clones where like obviously when they disappear, I don't get 100% of the knowledge, but they're able to pass on what they learn in a much condensed time. Because you know how like when you learn something it takes 100 hours, but you can probably teach someone in five hours because you spend the time learning it. So yeah. outsourcing that learning time has been like, whoa, like that's so efficient. Like hiring thinkers. That's like Elon Musk. He has like 10 companies. He, he doesn't do the thinking for 10 companies. He hires thinkers for him that pass up knowledge and he sort of just knows the bigger picture. Sponge, he absorbs it all. Exactly. He asks a lot of questions. Like I've seen like people like, yeah, you know, must he'll just like interrogate you. It feels like it, but he's just asking questions. He asks really good questions. I think in today's day as well, with everything automated, with search being there as well, it's really important to gain a grasp as to how things essentially work in the sense that from their fundamentals, yeah, essentially how they work, the nitty gritty. So if you can ask good questions, you immediately can develop your knowledge more. And going back to what you said, 
about having those essentially clones working for you. I don't think your interns would like you calling them clones, man. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, right? that's essentially, if you think about it, how all systems are founded on, that's essentially the foundation of all systems, right? You have essentially the founders of the system putting in a lot of manpower and a lot of work into it and being able to create it a fully functioning self-servicing system to which you can teach that system to other people in essentially three hours and then they learn and they can think about improvements and i think that's also the foundation of what a lot of companies are built on essentially like you know they have that foundation and now it's just branching it out and seeing what they can do with that foundation to you know delve into different areas or see what else that they can do and that's literally amazon to a t they started from scratch, you know, obviously any selling company books. essentially. From freaking selling books. Like what the hell, he literally just, Jeff used to just pack and sell books. And he's just evolved. He's just like a whole different beast. But like look I think at these guys. Yeah, so, and a lot of people discount as well the amount of effort that goes into building these systems to be able to, you know, transfer knowledge easier to other people as well. Like someone's got to do it. <laughs> someone's got to put stick it out for the boys you know what i mean like, yeah it's gotta be done but yeah elon musk as well yeah. is that is, we might as well name this podcast the uh the musk the elon musk and jeff bezos fan club bro like these guys are just yeah <laughs> legends. these guys are insane because like talking about like the rich like i understand how the rich get richer it's because like when you build systems everything just becomes it you build systems to build systems to build systems bang and it just bang, stacks yeah. up so like for example you build systems to run your own company then you build systems to like you know build the next company with you so amazon has two things then you build mm. a system to just consistently make companies then you build the yeah. systems to build to just continuously build kilometers kilometers and then try <laughs> It's just, and that's how it compounds, and that's how, like, this guy turns into this. Yeah, 100%. And it's like Google and Amazon are the prime examples of it, right? They've diversified their business so well to be able to monopolize the market as well as take advantage of different things that we didn't even know we needed. Do, do, could you have imagined 10 to 15 years ago, Google Maps is overtaken, like, you don't need a GPS in your car anymore. The phones that we all have, have probably a larger battery life than the GPS has evolved. We can just plug our phone in, Google Maps comes up, it'll take us where we need. We, we didn't even know that we needed these things before. Yeah. And yet it's come up in such a way that it's just, oh, I can't get over it, I can't get over it. But see, Bezos is gonna continue developing that, right? Whereas Elon Musk, he's like, I feel he's taking a little bit of a slightly different trajectory. His main priority isn't to accumulate his wealth. It's literally to, you know, we, he's got different things going on, Tesla, SpaceX, et cetera. And that's the difference between the two. But it's, it's interesting to see. It's like we're never going to live in a time again where we have these two heavyweights, even like um, Microsoft. Microsoft are coming up big soon as well. Like they, with, I don't think Microsoft really have much other than like obviously Office and they got the um, hardware that they're trying to push out now, a little bit of software as well. But I don't think we're ever going to live at an age where they've literally transformed how, maybe not Elon Musk so much, maybe Elon Musk is more to the future, but transformed how we go about data. Like you said last week, searches. Yeah, so scary. I like, they just have so much data and they just grow at a same pace. Like they just like, and, and they predict what people need. Yeah, actually no, Elon Musk really comes up with a lot of innovating ideas. Because I heard like reading following Steve Jobs, he hit like Apple, they never invent any new tech. Like Samsung's always like two years ahead of time. They just follow what works and just make it way better. I think that's what Apple are good at in the sense that so the new technologies that you will see okay let's just take the smartphone space for example right so smartphones that we have today compared to I always say 10 years ago but even five years ago now they're completely different right now yeah. so Apple are operating in the space where they know that they will succeed they prioritize the aesthetic appeal of their devices they prioritize the their ecosystem they push out as well the, um, like a lot of the Apple devices that they push out, it's mainly just ease of use, convenience. They make it so easy for you to use. You like, they like take the iPhone for example. You have select few apps and you press it. You know what it is. When people pick up a Samsung phone, right? 
or an Android phone, for example, it's obviously a little bit more difficult because of the variety of options that you have available to you in front of you, right? Yeah. But that's what Apple's seen. They, they don't prioritize innovation. They prioritize making what the technology that's available good. Like they, they implement it incredibly well in their products. And that's how you see their products doing so well because they're able to prioritize that. Whereas you have your Xiaomi, your Huawei, your Samsungs and all the other um, Android based um, phone companies out there, sorry, Android software using phone companies out there, they're innovating. They're trying to find out how to um, implement the phone um, front facing camera underneath the display. They're trying to do all these things, which when the Apple will eventually take and implement to their products. And then people obviously won't be, won't be familiar with how, you know, the other Chinese or other Korean companies have used um, these technologies in the past, but become familiar with Apple. So it's all, you know, levels, levels. Less is more. That's like, that's their thing. Less is more. So the, essentially the week in recap, there was a lot of things that happened this week, right? So yeah. starting off essentially, you know, it's a bit crazy in the world out there. In America, you have, bushfires going on in California. Then no there's, way, what? Yeah, dude, it, it's getting a bit crazy. And then there's on the other side of America, I think south of America in Louisiana, um, there's recently Cyclone <laughs> Laura or Hurricane Laura, um, category four, category four cyclone hit and it's been immense flooding. So, you know, thoughts and prayers out to anyone in America right now that's going through that. It's ridiculous, like, especially with the political and social climate of the country also in turmoil it's ridiculous right so that's the that's essentially the low 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 part of the, of the week what, what do you yeah see the Dude, look it feels like 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 2020 has been like this play just like i don't know what they do in bible with like the 12 days of like where like she just goes crazy and, and mother nature is just trying to cleanse earth or just give us a signal because right now it's crazy, like how. Yeah, dude, we had bushfires, then we had flooding, or was it flooding, then bushfires, and then, like, that was at the start of the year. Yeah. And then you think about everything else that's happened this year, dude. I swear to God, this year is like a real life Jumanji. Have you, did you watch yeah. the original Jumanji? I have, dude, I have. Every roll of the dice, every step that you take, just happens. I don't know what's going on, but as soon that ranger, that killer ranger is going to come out of nowhere, bro, and start killing people on the streets, bro. I swear to God, that your bunch of movie plays scarred me. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was a scary, scary, like, young movie. That was not supposed for kids, dude. Like, I, I was scared to watch it. Like, the kid turns into a monkey, and, like, there's like crazy people trying to kill each other and like the main character what's his name the uh robin williams he's like scared in the whole movie and this is and it's dark and like it's, it's this dark. old school like footage and this is like a horror movie it is but the premise of it was quite interesting because it was like obviously it you had you lived through it and literally what 20 20 years bro 20 20 years just god playing jumanji i swear to yeah. kill it. like it's not even funny like far out but um no so that's on the last note obviously this year hasn't been good for anyone and obviously anyone affected by covid it's just rough you know everyone's being affected by it but on a lighter note going back to her best mate elon musk this morning <laughs> i went up oh, this morning I woke up and I woke up a bit late today, but you know, as you do, you go on your phone. Well, I go on my phone and I check whatever happened overnight because obviously the time difference between us and America just stuff happened, right? So I'm on YouTube and like we spoke last week, the algorithm of YouTube is quite insane, right? It tailors to what you like, etc. I'm on YouTube and I see a live stream. Guess who's live streaming? Who? Oh, what is it is? the record ship? Yeah, SpaceX. Yeah. SpaceX is live streaming. What dude, happened? I watch I watched it. It was ridiculous, dude. Like, because uh, I know they've not they've done it before, but essentially this is like well, it's the first time I've ever watched it on live stream, right? And it's crazy to think like before it was obviously always televised, but on a live stream, hearing people from SpaceX obviously commentate, it was ridiculous. So they launched um, a Falcon 9 rocket, and it was Saicon 1B. So satellite, they were launching essentially a satellite into space, which will be orbiting. Um, which they essentially launched as a satellite into orbit, right? Yeah, Saikon 1B. So what happened is essentially this satellite that they're launching is for 
It's used for soil moisture, so it's going to be used by Argentina primarily, and it essentially helps providing, it essentially provides competitiveness and help to the agriculture sector, whereby it provides early flood warnings and help, it just helps with the agriculture sector a lot for Argentina primarily, right? So yeah, so I think it starts off a little bit later where they show the launch, right? So the rocket launches and it's all fine, but it's the way that it's able to launch and then re-land it lands itself back down again like i oh, it was just insane to see like the first Dude, one it sounds so, insane stake on 1a was launched in 2018 and this yeah. is 1b so two years later the total cost of it is 600 million now this rocket that you see falcon 9 yeah. this particular rocket i think has been reused four times Damn. A, a literal rocket going into space being reused and the estimated useful life of this rocket so they can estimate that it can be used up to 100 times over with significant refurbishments and improvements on it but without significant refurbishments just like you know a little bit of tweaking here and there just making sure that it's fit for use essentially up to a maximum of 50 times wow this is insane dude in like america like in san francisco people would like watch these like would go to like piers we could see it you would watch it. it would be like a whole event um, like, yeah, yeah. And we would see rocket ships just fly randomly. It's like, that's probably Elon Musk's ship. But like, dude, I'm reading Elon Musk's book and like building SpaceX was very difficult. Like they built it from scratch. They went through so much hardships to get to where they are. And obviously, like you said, this goes back onto what we were saying earlier about the systems. Obviously, Musk, Big Musky did not have the rocket science engineering in his brain obviously he got the people who had the foundations he got whoever he needed sold his vision to them they're like yep sweet keen yeah. let's do it and they've built a reusable rocket obviously the technology isn't there for space exploration yet at the moment yeah. it's obviously being primarily used for launching um satellites into orbit etc but it was like to the dot time to perfection it was crazy to see especially the relaunch so you know obviously they got the boosters going on at the specific times and then this is crazy they got the i think they released they look like a toy like to when it like, was like what the hell it looks like a little toy that's gone up but then you remember it's this giant thing and it's just gone fast and fast and somehow like it stays straight and doesn't just go like that's the thing right so like yeah so we learn all about you know the everything is timed and detail down to perfection the mass yeah. of it etc so like they obviously need the orbital velocity to be able to um launch that satellite into its continual orbit and then needs the escape velocity as well right so and then for it to essentially be up in the air and like when i think of it right i think of the rocket being launched and i think of it essentially being in free fall i can just see it just free falling down but okay. the way they is they have the boosters and then they essentially they i think they release gas in certain ways to pivot it to keep it upright and then essentially on landing yeah, like it's ridiculous it is it is insane does it have like do you reckon it has ai to like on the way down like does it use ai to like balance itself out or is it planned pre-planned i think like ai would seem the best sort of way to go about it i don't I honestly don't know but see so right now what you're seeing this is, is insane. That, to anyone that's not obviously we're watching on YouTube, just listening. Yeah, so we're just watching a clip of the satellite essentially being launched into orbit. So you have the satellite going off in one direction and you have the, the, the essentially the vehicle for the satellite, the rocket itself, just staying there and it's eventually going to come down. So oh, I don't know, man, it's ridiculous. Oh, but it's this like, It's like a parachute. No, it's like a hot yeah. air balloon type of thing. Yeah. So see, the satellite's got its own burners to make sure it keeps going, obviously to reach yeah. orbital velocity so a funny story about this particular launch so this particular launch was launched on the east coast i think and it's the first time a rocket has launched from this place from this site since 1960. now the last time a rocket was launched from this particular site was during the cold war and america was trying to gain surveillance on russia by launching a sneaky rocket you know as you do launching a rocket launching a satellite and it would essentially be um hovering over russia or whoever they're, they're up against i think it was pretty much russia right essentially just gaining yeah. it was a it was an intelligent satellite so gaining data etc or whatever they were doing right the rocket essentially failed right and in they call it a launch corridor when a lock they launch 
um, rockets in a specific corridor so that should there be an unfortunate event of an emergency or a failure, what happens is if it's within the launch corridor, it's fine because if it blows up, it essentially falls into like nothing, just a vacant land. Yeah. Right? That makes sense. But in 1960, what happened is I think the rocket was like halfway to like going over somewhere and it was essentially over Cuba. And what happened is th something something went wrong and they had to, you know, cancel the cancel the rocket or something. And essentially parts of the rocket fell over Cuba, et cetera. And one of the parts hit a cow in Cuba. And, and it, America, America had to pay Cuba like $2 million or something to re to compensate for them for the rocket falling into their land or whatever, because Cuba was threatening to give give the rocket and tell Russia or something and then yeah. um, sell it off to China, et cetera. So America was like, here's $2 million, I'm sorry. And it's like fable that the cow is the most expensive cow in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining, oh, it was pretty funny. Yeah, so it's the same to me, like there's so many moving parts in this, like so many things are being let go. Like, it's insane, like, yeah. did they like, launch rockets before humans like w was the cold war before the moon race like or did we just go straight to putting humans in rocket ships or straight to the moon like this is that's, insane that's what the cold war was about essentially is the race to the moon right oh. so during that time they obviously i think america were trying to gain it okay see how can you see the release of gas into the land? i do i do this is insane that, they're repositioning it they're trying to reposition wow. it perfectly so and dude, it fell exactly on the landing site. Is it falling? It looks like it's just floating right now. Unless it's just moving so fast. Can you see the timeline there? Um, the se the semisphere. Sorry, the yes. semicircle at the bottom. Yes. I think. So when I don't know when exactly. I think it might be soon. But can you see it's slowly like lowering itself? I do. Like, yeah. It's insane. The altitude is like dipping ish. No, that's for the other one. That's insane. And yeah, so this is launched on the East Coast. And yeah, like this is, I've never been so intrigued and amazed by this. Like this is, so okay, see, it's entering the atmosphere. So they got the burners back on. Damn. They're bringing it down. Yep. There we go. You know, yeah, David, Blaine, David Blaine is doing this thing where his, his arm is hooked into a bunch of balloons and he's just going to be floating up. I, I saw, has he done that or is he about to do it? He's about to do it. So it was supposed to be done like yesterday or tomorrow. Yesterday, a few days ago. But due to weather, he couldn't do it. Because with bad weather, he might just literally blow off like like somewhere far, far away. So they need a day that's like not windy. But like, mm, that's pretty really crazy. And he needs to be able to get, he's going to go to a height where it's hard to breathe. So he'll have to like hold his breath or do like breath work. Like, <sighs> yeah. Like, it's it's like, like a yeah and it's like essentially training to go on a to climb a mountain essentially you need to obviously prepare yourself given yeah. that the change in altitude will affect your breathing but mm -hmm. that guy mental that guy i don't know what he's planning like what happens when you're up there and what your last balloon just goes pop and then what like mm -hmm. you just come flying back down like someone just gonna like you know put out safety mats and gymnastic mats everywhere it's like that when he falls he's all sweet i, I just like the scariest thing is when you're up there, you you he's like blown like left and right, so he literally has no idea where he's gonna land, and he has a parachute, so like in one of the balloons, he's gonna take a parachute, put on the parachute, and he's gonna skydive down. But like, what if you're just in a neighborhood, like a city? Like he's gonna have to somehow find a place to land. Yeah, like insane. But this is what the f this is crazy. It's landed. Look at that. In the wow. same spot that it launched from. That's mental. Like if okay, if you're at home and you're listening to this on Spotify, or if you're watching it on YouTube, thank you for watching along with us. Shout out! But if you're listening on Spotify, dude, like go and watch. Like don't watch the whole thing, obviously. Just go and watch snippets of it. Like it's ridiculous a thing. I don't think anyone can like really grasp how ridiculously amazing this is. A reusable rocket that they've launched. So they've just launched a satellite to orbit. They've brought the same rocket back down. They're going to fix it up and be like, yeah, good to go for next week, mate. Or like, good to go for yeah. the next couple of months or something. Far out. That is the future. This is the future. See, like, that's the difference between Big Musky and Big Bezos at the moment. You know, we've got two different worlds, but one's for the future, one's building its net worth. And that's where we're at now.
that's that's yeah. the world there's some people who say that like Elon Musk is like I think it was our Neil deGrasse Tyson he was like Elon Musk is like literally the Tesla or like I don't know what who else he compared it to of our world where he's like literally creating change and innovation whereas like the Mark Zuckerberg's and Apple uh, Larry Page, which is the CEOs and founders of Google and Jeff Bezos, like the things they do, it's not too impactful. Like Elon Musk yep. is like a freak of nature, like literally, like he's a freak of nature. He's breaking boundaries. He's breaking so many boundaries, but people don't realize it. Because if Elon Musk did not do this, okay, like let's think about it. If Elon Musk did not do this, if he did not go about SpaceX and space exploration, who would have done it? Who would have thought, okay, let's, let's do let's do reusable rockets? No, saying no one is a little bit of like I, I agree. I don't know who could have, but I think it would have, like he's brought what could have been what would have been done like fifty years down the line, or maybe hundred years to now. Like he's, oh, it's it's mental, dude. It's mental. I just can't get over it, dude. When I like am reading the Elon books, the Elon book biography every night it's like i need to think bigger like this guy's on some next level scale it yeah. just makes me like for example right now i want to innovate the education space like i want to literally create one of the best online marketing programs ever and like dude like that's so small but then at the same time it makes me want to like master this in such a small amount of time so i can move on to the next thing because like like Elon Musk is like literally building like space electric cars digging holes mm. other times mm. like oh my game soon but then again, I could literally go down the Jeff Bezos route and just like go all in on education, think about AI, like mm. talk about like how to like turn everyone into entrepreneur. But then like that's like one way where you just go all in on like selling books, and then you become like this crazy Columbian bit. It's quite interesting to think, especially given that in the space that you're in, having two big figureheads, or maybe a lot more than two, right? But at the moment, when you're thinking about technology in the world you think about these two big boys right and you're right you're exactly right in thinking about it you have the opportunity uh quick shout out anyone that's listening go check andy out go check his content out go on the website click that link if you're interested in dropshipping check it out right now thank you but what 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 could happen is you're right you could do what you're doing now finish it up move on to the next thing think bigger think think huge or really monopolize the market in Australia or however big you obviously plan to go. Really, because at the moment, you've been working really hard in your business and I've seen it grow from what it was at the start of the year to obviously now, right? Obviously, there's been a lot of change. A lot of people don't know how hard you've worked on that business and how much change has happened in it, right? But you're right. Like, you have the opportunity to do that. You have the opportunity to become your Bezos or essentially, I would, like, obviously, in, when you think of Elon Musk in the sense that obviously what's a new thing you know what's a new thing that you can get into what's a new thing that you can try and break down and become reality but oh ridiculous ridiculous dude now on that topic I was recently listening to this other podcast he was I, I don't know who he is but he has this book called like I don't know bringing something to zero basically using all your money so that when you die you have zero dollars in your bank account because he's like what's the point of dying and having millions in your bank account or in net worth like what's the point yeah and what's the point of giving yeah. it to your children like you literally want it to now just spend it all before you die like if you mm-hmm. build up billions in net worth like mm-hmm. what's the point when you die and that that really got me thinking he, he has a point like dude like what if you just keep saving money and you just die with all this money and then he talks about being optimized optimizing the experience for your age being able to do everything that you can't do in your 40s but can do in your 30s do those things don't like keep stacking it up like usually i'm always like pulling the slingshot back and every time i get a win and like i can let go i pull it back further every time i get like a boost i pull it back further usually i should be releasing it but then i just keep pulling it but obviously that's like a like a um one-to-one sort of sample like it's not true like i'm able to you're able to have the best of both worlds where you're constantly pulling it back and leveraging the future but then you're also doing things like traveling enjoying yourself eating out hanging out with friends so i do have a bit of both worlds but like the guy has a set but he has like even he has a point like what's the point of dying with all this net worth and that's a very interesting way to think about it because obviously there's obviously with anything there's always different schools of thought and different trains of thought attached with that and i think 
to rebut that, not rebut, but provide a different perspective. Obviously, if you have a family and obviously if you've accumulated a decent amount of net worth, obviously, in my perspective, a decent amount of net worth would be a lot less than what you'd perceive it to be, right? Or what anyone else perceive it to be. But it's perspective, everything's perspective. So obviously, I would think about, not I, but like, a person, a regular person, maybe just think about providing for their family. So there's always that two schools of thought, two different perspectives, or many different perspectives on it. It's like, it really depends on the person. Obviously, I 100%, like, I think, bro, if you have an accumulated net worth of X amount of dollars and you die with that, bro, do you know how many problems that's going to cause for the family, dude? Family, I don't know any, like, that's just going to cause problems for the family in the future. Be like, oh, no, I want this man. Oh, like, it's just ridiculous, dude. I, I can just see it happening. <laughs> Dude, you know what I'm excited for? Like, I'm so lucky that we have people that are ahead of us that we can watch and learn from. Like, mm. I'm excited to see what happens when Jeff Bezos dies and he just has like $500 billion lying around. Like, does it just somehow keep in Amazon? Does it just get liquid and he just tr donates it all? And like, when he donates it all, what's going to happen? Does the world just become like lifted? Like, is the world on steroids for a period of like 10 years with like 500 billion added to like the GDP of like the world, like what's gonna happen? And then like, that's definitely something we can learn from. But dude, like check the time. Time for blue trail 50. Oh my goodness. And that's a wrap and that's episode two. That's <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to Andy and I just start from a couple of topics and just come to 55 minutes. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are liking this. I really want to get your feedback. Let me and Christian know what your thoughts are. Christian, where can they get, reach out to you from? Like I said last week, my Instagram handle, um, it's my first name, so K-R-I-S-H-N, followed by another two N's, P at Instagram. So yeah, hit, hit us up. Like We'd appreciate all the feedback, obviously. If you're um, listening on Spotify, wherever you're listening on, you know, just let us know. Any topics that you'd like us to talk about as well, let us know. If you disagree with some of the things you said, let us know. If you don't like us, let us know. <laughs> Thank you guys. I really appreciate everyone's time. Please hit the subscribe button. Please follow. Give me a rating on if you're on Apple, if you're listening to this on podcast, Google store, Apple store, please give us a rating. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, this is officially the flip side. I'll see, we'll be seeing you guys next week. And thank you so much for doing this with me, Christian. Peace out guys. Peace out. See you next, see you next episode.